Now let's look at the, the last uh, item of this lecture, the transshipment problem. In a transportation problem, if the items being transported must go through an intermediate point called the transshipment point before reaching a final destination, the problem is called a transport, transshipment problem. For example, a company might be manufacturing a product at several factories to be shipped to a set of regional distribution centers. From these centers, the items are shipped to retail outlets that are the final destinations. One might you know, uh, produce things in Texas and ship it to, say, Indianapolis, and then uh, it, it, it can be distributed to, throughout, to, uh, throughout other retailers in the United States. So in that case, we are going to use transshipment uh, problem. The case in point is frosty machines. Frosty machines manufacture snow blowers in factories located in Toronto and Detroit. These are shipped to the regional distribution centers in Chicago and Buffalo, and then delivered to the supply houses in New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, uh, as, as you can see in this network diagram. The available supplies at the factories, the demands at the final destinations, and shipping costs are shown here in this diagram. Notice that snow blowers may not be shipped directly from Toronto or Detroit to any of the final destinations, but must first go to either Chicago or Buffalo. This is why Chicago and Buffalo are listed not only as destinations, but are as sources. So these are destinations, but also sources, and this is transshipment point, and you are just uh, uh, stopping by here, and then they are delivering things over there. Frosty machines would like to minimize the transportation cost associated with the shipping sufficient snow blowers to meet the demands at the three destinations while not exceeding the supply at each factory. Thus, we have supply and demand constraints similar to the transportation problem. But we also have one constraint for each transmission uh, transshipment point, indicating that anything shipped from this to a final destination must have been shipped into that transshipment point from one of the sources. The verbal statement of this problem uh, will uh, will be uh, there later. And here are the information of the shipping. So. Uh, supplies 800, 700, 450, 350, and 300, and uh, from Toronto to Chicago, four dollars. From Toronto to uh, Buffalo is seven, and Detroit to uh, Chicago, five dollars, and Buffalo is seven dollars, and the Chicago to NYC, and so forth. Those, those data is available here, and the demand is 450, 350, 300, and we, I put it right here, and supplies 800 and 700 for Toronto and Detroit. So let's uh, now define uh, the variables, x, i, j again, and uh, i is sourcing and j is destination, and we have Toronto and Detroit. And notice that I include Chicago and Buffalo because it's also uh, shipping some items from there to uh, the other locations, such as New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis. Now, J is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I, I am including 3 and 4 again here because Chicago and Buffalo are included here as uh, uh, destinations. They can receive uh, a shipment from Toronto and Detroit. So, you know, this transshipment problem includes these two cities, both in the source and destination. That's the difference that we have to look at it. Now, let's formulate the objectives and the objective that we have to um, uh, look at is, as you saw the, from the previous table, we have a transportation cost laid out for us and use that and minimize the cost, the transportation cost for X13 and so forth and 447. And then we have, uh, have to formulate the constraints as well. And if you look at the tables you know, from the previous slide, uh, the demand uh, um, the supply from Toronto is set as 800. So um, the supply 
is uh, one is uh, the Toronto, and uh, you can go to either uh, Chicago or Buffalo, right? So that's why it has to be less than or equal to 800. And similarly for Detroit, it starts with two, and it goes to Chicago or Buffalo, has to be less than or equal to 700 because there's a limit in supply. And then we have demand constraint. So New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, they have 450, 350, and 300 demand uh, uh, constraint. And so uh, their number is five for New York, and three and five, four are Chicago and Buffalo. And again, for six is Philadelphia, and three and four are uh, Chicago and Buffalo, and so forth. So we have this demand uh, uh, constraints. And then we have interesting uh, uh, you know, constraint. So shipping through Chicago has to be equal to the the uh, demand, right? So so you cannot exceed exceed your supply. So supply and demand has to be equal, right? That's what it means by that. Or if you look at here, the number of units shipped out of Chicago is equal to the number of units shipped into Chicago, right? That has to be uh, uh, equal. So now one three and two three is uh, saying that uh, it was uh, shipped from shipped to Chicago, right? So so and that's and from Chicago, it's going to be shipped to other places such as uh, New York and Philadelphia and uh, Saint Louis. They have to be equal. It cannot be imba imbalanced. In the same way for Buffalo, here is four. And uh, it's receiving their shipment from either uh, Toronto or Detroit, and then it has to be equal to ship to places such as uh, 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 New York and Philadelphia and Saint Louis. So they have to be equal. That's why we are adding these two constraints there. Once you have done that, now we can solve that uh, problem using Excel. Uh, Excel solver and uh, the answer is 9550 and uh, the you know things are given over here and we will solve it together using Excel solver